Hey guys and welcome back to another match day vlog. Today not so way to Swindon. It's the last game of the season and most likely our last game as a football league club unless a miracle happens. That miracle being not winning against Swindon and Cambridge winning against Macclesfield. There's not much hope but there's a little bit of hope. For the last time this season, come on Knots, come on you pies, come on Cambridge, let's do this. Right, here we are then, we've almost arrived, and yeah, this season's been a very, very long season indeed, it's been an utter shambles, from start to finish. I don't really know how I still end this, to be honest. We should have been relegated about two or three weeks ago. But we've been lucky. We're in this mess this season because, well, everything's just a catastrophe. On the pitch, results haven't been good enough. Like I said, this season, we've had games where we've lost where we should have drew, and games where we've drawn when we should have won. Behind the scenes is a mess, we've got no scouting system, no training ground, our finances are stupidly bad and it's just, uh, yeah it's just a complete mess behind the scenes, there's no proper infrastructure or anything at all. It's the Ox Takeover of Stretching Services. Tons of shops, coaches here. Alright, see you later. See you, Mel. Absolute takeover. <laughs> Team News in, well, it was a few, quite a while ago now. David Thorne's in the starting lineup. Tutu is ill, so Mitch Rose goes to right wing back. Yeah, David Vaughan in the biggest game of the season. <laughs> it's kind of an enforced change to be honest, but oh well. Yeah, it's quite quite a long walk to this to this winning ground to be honest. We had, we had quite long walks to the ground before. Coventry was an old very very felt like a marathon. But yeah, quite a long walk to the to the ground. But it is quite a decent ground to be fair, so and the um, the Swindon thing, you may have seen it in the video just before. Yeah, fair do so, because that looks quite good. No matter what happens, staying up or going down, you're not so good. Nineteen. Nineteen minute nineteen minutes in, no nil still. David Vaughan's been our best player. Where has this David Vaughan been all season? And he's finally fit. He's had a he's had a forty five game pre season and now he's arrived. Yeah, Vaughan's probably been our best player so far. Not really, not much not much has happened to be honest. It's still no nil at Max for a game or two. Right, 
at half time, it's Swindon nil knots nil. Macclesfield are losing. But the problem is we haven't shown enough quality in the final third yet again to be able to trouble the Swindon goal. It really hasn't been that much of a thrilling encounter. But we must take advantage of Macclesfield losing. We must take advantage of that because if Cambridge win, we've just got to do our bit. Do our bit. Maxwell have just drawn level against Cambridge. Fuck's sake. Done really well this half as well. We pressed and pushed forward well. Mikel Smith's had a really good game. Oh, gosh. Rob Nilsson, what have you done? It hasn't just been this. It hasn't just been this game, though. It's been like, yeah, it's been like it's been happening since the start of the season. We conceded two 90th minute goals in the first four games to Cambridge and Newport, and that just set the tone. <laughs> to be honest, I'm two goals to so out. Once Macclesfield scored, it just felt like the end. Walking away from the county ground. Swindon three knots one. The inevitable, to be honest. The inevitable has been confirmed. And yeah, I accepted it two months ago. When we lost to Cheltenham, not really, I just pretty much said we were down then. Yeah, we haven't really. It's a very self inflicted relegation. There it is. 
131 years and out in the Football League. We're not playing Bradford, we're not playing Scunthorpe or Plymouth, but we're playing Bromley, Sutton and Dover. It's going to be an experience and it's going to be one that could make or break the club. It's going to happen. It's been, ha it's been coming for a while. It's been an absolute shambles of a season. Oh gosh. For 10 minutes. For 10 minutes there was hope. And then it just went away. It was like Gillingham part two. This time last year we were playing Luton on the last day of the season. We were not finished. Nil nil. Next season we're going to be three leagues apart. Football, eh? But a lot needs to be done and a lot needs to be sorted out. Ah, you boys! You boys! It's been a long season. It's been the longest season I've ever had to endure as following football and following this club. And it's ended with relegation. Second relegation of our. We are the 23rd worst team in the league, so we're right. We have gone down. Yeah. Like, we have done it ourselves. The chairman's not good enough. The players are not good enough. And the managers haven't been good enough. There you go. So, for the listening. Main so, that is it. Another season over. And this one is the worst of them all. Relegation to non league. For the first time. Yeah. Played 46, won 9, draw, drew 14, lost 23, scored 48, conceded 84, minus 36 goal difference I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, 41 points, 23rd place. We, can, we can't blame anyone but ourselves for this. There's a number of people who should the blame should be put on for where we are, where we find ourselves right now. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons. Firstly, and most obviously, Alan Hardy. You, you egotistical wanker. You have been at the forefront of this collapse you have made us the laughing stock of the football league you've made us the laughing stock of english football in the summer you interfered too much with the transfers with the transfers and the playing side of things leave that up to the manager it is not your job to get involved with transfers and who stays and who goes yes i understand you wanting a younger squad because when you're two million in debt you kind of need to be a bit more sustainable as a football club but you know that doesn't mean get rid of every single experienced player and this goes to kevin Earl as well you didn't have to get rid of every single experienced player you can't you are allowed to keep some you are allowed to keep alan smith you are allowed to keep sheldon Miyubi, michael o'connor it does when when it, when he means, you know, make bring the average age of the squad down, it doesn't mean release everyone who's nearing 30 years old. Second point, recruitment. And that is a mass, that's played a massive part in getting us where we are now. The recruitment, not just this season, but for several years, has been shambolic. There is no structure, there's no, we've got no proper scouts, we've got no director of football, there's no head of football operations or anything, there's no infrastructure behind the scene, there's nothing. It's just, okay, um, we'll have that player, that player, that player, player that player, um, and we'll sign them lot, and then that'll be fine. There was no sort of plan in the summer at all, it was just, you know, Who's, who did okay last season? Let's just bring in the big names. David Vaughan on 5k a week, for example. The 45 minutes he played today in the first half, that was the best 45 minutes I've seen him play. But why is he turning up then? Why And why have we signed him? Why are you trying to go? Why have we trying? Why have we tried to go from a star last season that worked to a star this season that hasn't? Lincoln... On the other hand, 
They didn't swap their style out, but they became more intelligent with the ball and where to play it in the final third. And just, just look at them as an example of what needed to be done. We did the opposite and it's gone, well, look where we are. We're 23rd in the table and we've been relegated. And the recruitment was horrific. Christine Dennis, we bought him for what? Just near, nearly 100k, was it? Um, he scored three goals and now he scored one goal out, out on Leonard Grimsby. Come on, come on. NGO Baldwin hasn't lived up to the hype. He had a big price tag and didn't scored a few cracking goals in his first few games and that was it. It was a complete shambles. It's a complete shambles behind the scenes. Uh, financially, um, like I say, no infrastructure, no proper plan at all. And it's culminated in not no longer being in a football in, in the football league. On to managers. For a while we have not really made any great managerial appointment. I mean if you went back to the season where we got promoted to League One since the 2010-11 season, how many managerial po managerial appointments we've made? Can how can how many can you say have actually been decent appointments? You're struggling, aren't you? You're struggling to find at least one or two that were actually any any good man, any good. And what they did at the club was not great either. Thank you for the support on the vlogs this season. Thank you for the support on the channel. I really appreciate the support, the support because whilst this has been an absolute shambles of a season, the worst season I've ever had supporting not your support has been outstanding. We're so near to a thousand subscribers now. Stags fans, Lincoln fans, whoever you support, thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for commenting, uh, pressing the like button, whatever. It's been a woeful season. It's been horrific and poor. But next season there'll be new beginnings as we embark on a National League tour. If you've enjoyed the vlog, give it a like, comment down below your thoughts on the game and the whole season and the whole debacle at Knott's. Say subscribe if you're subscribed, subscribe if you're new. Thank you for the support on the channel throughout the season. We're so near to a thousand subscribers. Press that subscribe button. Be safe. Be champions, and as always, Sulu.